Slack businesses, techno toys, and jigsaw jubilees. All this and more as the Stafford Weekly News starts now. Welcome to the Friday, February 3rd edition of the Stafford Weekly News. I'm Randall Williams. Last month, Congressman Al Green headed up a roundtable discussion at the Stafford Center about a minority-owned business development program. John King followed that up with an interview with the congressman and an overview of local businesses that have benefited. This is an agency that is the only federal agency tasked with promoting the growth of minority-owned businesses. My legislation, uh, the Minority Resiliency Act, was included in the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, and it um, became law in November of 2021. This made permanent, made this agency permanent. It is a permanent fixture in the government, and it has been authorized to receive $110 million per year uh, for fiscal years 21 through 25. I started in touch auto tent and accent in 1995 in New Orleans and I moved out here in 99 and I decided to open up a detail shop which was mobile for the first four or five years and I decided to change my entity to auto window tinting. I started Cake and Eat It too, um, full time since 2013. I started it because I worked in dentistry for 16 years and I wanted to go back to school to, um, you know, get a science degree in hygiene but I missed the deadline getting in. Legacy, man, we, we've been started now about, about 20 months. And uh, we opened up about 20 months right at the end of COVID, man. We had uh, wanted to do something. My son came to me and said, hey, dad, you know, the cigar lounge is available. You know, let's, let's try to leave a legacy. Lee's Wine Bar originated in 2016, um, just from a dream. Uh, of mine of wanting to own a wine bar for about 20 years. Um, and so the opportunity arose, is, you know, where, whereas in Missouri City, we didn't have anything um, of the sort um, at that time. And so we opened April 1st, 2017, out of a dream and an idea and a vision that I had. It's a beautiful thing because, I mean, like when I first started out, you know, I was fortunate. I had a few people to help me out, you know, but at this point, there's a lot of people that want to open their own business and be their own boss. They just don't have the finances, the resources to make that happen. And with Congressman Al Green, you know, bringing this up and helping, you know, bringing it up again and, you know, actually putting it out there for people to try to open their own business, it's a beautiful thing, man. It means freedom. A lot of responsibility, a lot of risk, no sleep, um, but it's all for the good of being independent and allowing in a, um, others to work. Minority businesses have difficulty getting off the ground, and when they do, they still have difficulty maintaining the business model that they've developed. When you consider just the, you know, like starting out with about $5,000, but you consider having a family, a mortgage, um, you know, all types of bills and everything that go along with it, that really doesn't stretch that far. One of the things that we're lacking, the Bible tells us that we, our people perish for lack of knowledge, but also we perish for a lack of opportunity. And so the, the, the opportunity that, that Al Green is, is putting forth would give minorities an opportunity to own their own businesses. It's a beautiful thing because it gives people opportunities not to have to mess around with the big organizations, the big companies, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a form of a leeway you know, for other things to happen in the community for, with small minority businesses. Coming from COVID, coming out of COVID, um, for those of us whose doors are still open, um, we've had to really rebuild. And so those funds are still, still needed because um, 
we still have the scare of COVID, uh, and people are still fearful or really congregating in a closed space. And so those funds are still needed for us to keep uh, employees on, on board um, and to keep our doors open. Without capital, you don't even have boots. So you can't have success because you don't have the boots. So the capital becomes the boots, and the MBDA is an agency devoted to helping uh, African American people of color, women as well, other people of color uh, included, uh, people who have Asian ancestry, people who are of uh, Latin ancestry, uh, Hispanic Americans, all of the minorities that they are defined in this country will benefit from the MBDA, the Minority Business Development Agency. One hundred of anything is a lot. A hundred dollars, a hundred pounds, a hundred head of cattle. How about a hundred days of school? SMSD recently hit that milestone and John King was there. Today we have celebrated the 100 day of school. Um, this is a tradition we have that we celebrate the 100 years of school um, every year. And so today we had students dress up as 100 years old or they could create a project which includes counting to 100 and they can create shirts, projects, posters and bring on the creativity to show um, how they are celebrating the 100 days of school. This gets them excited about school and you know excited towards what they have learned in the past hundred days, what they're going to learn in the next you know upcoming days. We keep a track of how many days we have been in school, how much we have grown. So this really gives them the accomplishment. I've completed hundred days of school. This makes it fun for the students, and you know it's not just oh boring old school. It gives them, you know, when they're creating the projects, it gives them the fun activities to do. This is also good for the parents to get involved with the students to work on the projects. And, you know, they really look forward to doing and creating these projects because they're so excited to show it to their schoolmates, you know, the teachers and everyone else. So it makes it more exciting for them to be part of the learning. We have different... Um, judging categories. We have students who dress up as, you know, 100-year-old um, grandpas and grandmas and grannies and whatnot. And then we have the creativity of the shirts and the projects that students have created. And uh, parents and students go above and beyond to, you know, get ready for this day. So Ms. Hines and I have been together at this ECC slash, you know, primary for almost about 10 years now. Um, she's always been supportive and I keep her on her toes with projects, but she's always there with, you know, our backs and she loves it because she sees that students are doing so well. They're involved. They're wanting to learn. They're wanting to be a part of this. So wherever there's students and it's all about them, she's there with us supporting us in the back. At the end of the day, we want them to see learning is not just, you know, take out your books and here it is, here's what we have in the test and what they hear about, oh, we have to take the star and we have to take this. Learning is also fun. There's fun ways and hands-on ways to learn, not just pencil and papers, you know, and uh, I'm not a test taker. I love to do projects and I see it when the students do the same, they bring on that creativity, they bring on those projects and you see those students shine. They may not be a paper pencil child, they might be a project student. So we're giving them different opportunities to learn. We wanna explore all the opportunities we have for them to um, show what they can do, not just paper and pencil, but the projects and the county, we see it in different mannerisms. So we're trying to bring learning from different perspectives. Abstract Action, next. In Stafford, diversity is not just a number, it's who we are. When you are here, you become part of the story. You can sleep well knowing we're always on the job and looking out for you. It's a great place for growth and opportunity. Tradition starts here. We teach your children and we stick around for your grandchildren. We are one. We are Stafford. This is the city of Stafford, and we are one. 
Houston Community College strives to prepare students for an ever-changing manufacturing industry, and that involves ever more modern tools. A trip to Stafford's Fabrication Lab shows where technology and creativity can meet. One of the gems of the Workforce Solutions building on the Stafford campus is the Fabrication and Innovation Lab, where every semester we get to visit and ask, do you have any fun new toys? Well, some of our new toys are not as new as we would like, but we just got some of them running because they're a big deal to get set up. Uh, this was actually done on the fourth axis of a flatbed CNC we have in the back of our shop. And that's really exciting. This was really cool. This was done by one of our lab users, a retired doctor. Uh, and then he went and sanded it to make it more gorgeous, but he actually modeled this whole thing. as a chest piece he's working on here in the lab. Obviously, this is wood. Um, just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. So we don't by any means at this point can say we're experts at it. We can train with it, but we're working on that. And uh, we just got this toy running and we're working on it. It's really going to be fun. You can do so many things with a large scale flatbed CNC. It's kind of like a four by eight router bed, but it's better than a router because we have some, you know, um, uh, advanced machinery in there, CNC and all that attached to it. And then our other cool toy was our uh, Fusion 1 from uh, Foam Labs. And what's really neat about that, that is powdered laser. So it's, it's a step below powdered metal, which we don't have, but powdered laser can get our students a little bit closer to that kind of technology where we can actually do a powdered material, in this case nylon with glass infused, and create objects that you really couldn't easily do any other way. More precise, strong, and with round and or shapes and places and, and things that we just couldn't do. And so the whole lab, because of those two machines, is taking a big step up. We also have some more cool users in here. We have a retired machinist who likes to come in here a lot, so he's helping us do some things we couldn't do before. So the lab is, coming back from COVID. Some new users are coming in, so we're getting some more expertise. And uh, it's fun because of the things they can do. And then hopefully, when the engineering students get in here and they go a little beyond what I can help them with, we can have one of these uh, retired people, which is a great use for retired people, get all that experience and expertise in here and help us do things for the engineering students and show them uh, what to do and how to do it or give them better ideas. They need to contact me. We are still to this day working on trying to get a, a web page up and running, but they can contact me, Roland Fields at roland.fields at hcs.edu, um, and just send me an email. We have a form we'll send you. We'll get you going. But I'm a real soft salesperson. I'm an inside sales guy. I want you to just walk in, take a look at the lab, talk to us. You can do that several times before you sign up and do anything. For HCC Beat, this is Randall Williams. Art can mean many things and takes many forms. The current faculty art show on the Stafford campus reaches and seeks for meaning in abstract forms and artwork. Kicking off the spring semester at the Stafford Fine Arts Center is an art show by two faculty members, reaching and seeking. I really like the process and I like the idea of going into the studio without a preconceived notion of what's going to happen and to to take that chance of of just kind of starting over and just you know not controlling it too much not planning it out um, and it's interesting that the smaller um, kind of pieces that have more representational uh, subject matter in there um, may stem a lot from uh, memories or maybe um, ideas. They might deal with little geometric studies, um, thinking about organizing space or counting um, or um, uh, you know, remembering some experience um, and 
it becomes kind of a collage of these bits of uh, experiences that come together. And then with the larger paintings, just simply playing with paint and pushing it around and building up layers. And I tend to, um, you know, sometimes pour on the paint or brush on the paint or use maybe a board or a squeegee uh, or sometimes spray it on and then let that dry and then go back. And oftentimes I'll use sandpaper and sand through layers of paint. Um, I really like to get away from that canvas surface. Uh, for this show, um, I was playing with alcohol ink and um, it was sort of a material that I collected through the years, uh, but never played with. Um, and it's sort of a, something that happened during the pandemic where uh, I was cleaning out my studio, kind of, you know, looking around and I came across this material and um, uh, started playing. And um, typically when I'm working, uh, there's sort of a play with uh, meditation and um, the physical uh, uh, interaction with the material. And so, um, and that can be in different sort of forms or ways in terms of the meditation or from the interaction with the materials. So um, that's pretty much, you know, the process uh, in general, um, how I interact, how I create. Um, I am physically working with the materials, like with my body. Um, and so sometimes you will see <laughs> sort of uh, marks uh, from my body, um, you know, some people uh, have have sort of joked saying, you know, oh, it's finger painting. Well, yeah, I mean, I've, <laughs> I've played a little bit like that, yes. Um, and I dabble with other materials as well to make my marks, but um, it's important for me to have that physical interaction with the material, so. For HCC Beat, this is Randall Williams. <laughs> Classy Quilts, next. You can try, but you won't find another city like Stafford, Texas. Serving our community just like you like it. Taking care of you and your home since 1945. We believe in STEM to learn and STEM to earn. We're heading into college certified and career ready. As a former student of Stafford, I take pride in keeping our classrooms safe. We are Stafford. We are one. The Autism Support Group Hope for Three has a fundraising event every year, which involves, appropriately enough, solving jigsaw puzzles in a competitive atmosphere. It's grown larger every year, and Fernando Ramirez picked up the pieces for this outing. Today we're having our sixth annual Felicia Smith Jigsaw Puzzle Competition. Teams of four have two hours to put together a 500 piece puzzle. It's just a way we kick the year off raising autism awareness and funds for the family we serve. But a little back history to it and why it's named Felicia Smith. Felicia was the founder of National Charity League Sugarland Jewels. It is a group of mother and daughters that bond through volunteerism. And she brought the idea to us and said, my whole family puzzles, why wouldn't we do a puzzle competition and kind of do a fun event to help raise awareness before we get started in the new year. So we kicked it off in 2018. It was so fun and so successful that we continued but even more so why it's named Felicia Smith is Felicia passed away in 2020 of lung cancer at the age of 44. So we're carrying on her legacy because this was her gift to the community in honor of those living with autism spectrum disorder. This year is sold out. We have 50 tables and teams of four, so we have over 200 people here. We have about 30 volunteers. All of our staff members are here, which there's 10 of us now. And we also have uh, five board members here today to represent the board. But it is the most 
um, satisfying feeling to see us come. Hope for Three will be 12 years old this year, and this event is so special because of Felicia, and just to know it grows bigger and bigger every year. We have people from Austin, Galveston, Lubbock that came into play today, so happy, content, and my heart is full. 2023 is going to be a year of growth and expansion for Hope for Three. We actually started a new strategic plan in October of 2022, and we'll finalize it next week. So we're looking to expand our board, our services, going to tip our toes into Harris County a little bit, but even more so, we're going to have some exciting events that will be coming up. Um, April 2nd is our car wash for kids. Come by, get an eco-friendly car wash from 10 to 12 on the 2nd of, of April. April is Autism Awareness Month. We also have a family fun fest that is for families with special needs children. It's going to be a festival, carnival type setting. We have great community support, lots of sponsorship opportunities. So feel free to reach out to us at hopeful3.org or give us a call at 281-245-0640. First of all, I am so honored to be a part of this organization and this incredible turnout today. This is our sixth annual event. It is our biggest that we've ever had, most successful, just to see all the people come, individuals, children, families, organizations from the community, all coming together in the name of supporting families with autism. Um, I feel so special to be here and so excited that people have come from far and wide to be here, um, people coming from Galveston, other parts of Texas, um, even locally here. It's just really nice to see such an amazing turnout to help the community, and I'm really proud to be a part of that. To see the community come out and support this event is phenomenal. Got people from far away, got people from close here in Fort Bend County and Houston, and it just speaks volumes to the need to support um, our loved ones with autism, but their families too. But to know the community steps up and supports our cause, our mission, and our purpose just speaks volumes to us as an organization, but to me personally, to garner that support from uh, the community is just great feeling. There is nothing like the cold weather we've been having to make you appreciate grandma's quilt. Past the warmth though, quilts also serve as beautiful handmade pieces of art. Fernando Ramirez attended a local show that proved exactly that. Every two years, uh, prior to COVID, we did have it every year, but every two years we bring together all the people who love quilting and put up uh, a show so that people can showcase their works and also so we can interest the public in what we're doing and how quilting as an art can be applied in today's world. The Quilt Guild of Greater Houston is the largest quilt guild in Houston. We have over 250 members. Um, it was founded uh, 45 years ago, so we've just celebrated our 45th anniversary. The mission of our guild is to further the love of quilting and the art of quilting and also to serve our community through the gifts that we have in our ability to create quilts. We have over 250 quilts from around, mostly it's the Gulf Coast, but all over Texas, um, and they're on display. There are art quilts, there are traditional quilts, very different quilting techniques um, that would uh, showcase different talents and different skills. Um, it's a combination of art, uh, crafts, and sewing. Quilting has been around for hundreds of years. It used to be that people quilted to stay warm. Uh, quilted clothes, quilted bed things. And over the years, as we've all progressed and technologies uh, come about, people have kind of lost the, the art of that. They've lost the desire to know about quilting. And so what we hope, to do, hope this does is inspires people to use their talent to create art, to create quilts to give back to others because there's a lot of ways that you can give to other people through your talent. So everybody who has a talent should share it and we hope that people come today and learn about how they can share their talent. This is a volunteer organization and it's a nonprofit organization so everything we do is through volunteers. We have over a hundred volunteers working here today and throughout and as you'll see all the quilts obviously are done by our volunteers. Um, I am inspired by the fact that so many people, men and women, want to give back to this. And um, I love the fact that 
we were able to bring all this together. The proceeds from this will be reinvested in materials and um, uh, fabric, cloth, whatever, uh, so for us to make quilts to donate to various organizations around uh, Houston. So we have a website, of course, Quilt Guild of Greater Houston, qgh.com. We invite everyone to join. You don't have to be a great uh, seamstress. You don't have to be a great quilter. Um, I learned to quilt 45 years ago, but I don't quilt real well, so I don't have a quilt here in the show, but I love seeing everybody else's, so it's very inclusive. We have such talented people who are willing to give of themselves to serve others. And that is the heart of this guild. And it is just so inspiring to have people who want to give back in such a way. And um, last year we donated, uh, in, during COVID, we donated 650 quilts to various organizations around Houston um, and Fort Bend County. Um, last year we did 565. So I'm just so excited and it's just such an honor to be part of an organization where people are so dedicated to giving back. That's a wrap on our news for this week. Thank you for joining us. For everyone here at Stafford Weekly News, I'm Randall Williams. May all your news be good news. This program was produced on the Stafford campus of Houston Community College.